on the high end, I'm just going to give you a high, low and a high. We could see over a million dollar Bitcoin. If everyone, if every company in the world starts FOMOing in at the same time, All right. Welcome back, everybody. My name's Austin. Very happy to have on the channel today, Bitcoin artist, creative director of Swan Bitcoin, and all-around good dude, Brecky Von Bitcoin. Man, thanks for coming on. What's going on, guys? Thanks for turning off your, your names. Oh, no, there they are. Okay, so I don't confuse you. Austin, Arnold, Aaron, Aaron and Arnold. Damn it. Austin. Wow. Aaron, right. Austin. Next guest. <laughs> no, let's get to it, dude. Excited to have you on today. Dude, you have been preaching the Bitcoin name forever. So I want to talk to you all about that. But give us your story for the folks at home. We know you because we met you at a crypto Wendy Bitcoin lolly meetup, I believe, or just yeah. some sort of Bitcoin meetup in, in Los Angeles. Or maybe it was a Bitcoin is, I don't know. But either way, give us your story. How'd you get into Bitcoin and what do you like about it? What do I like about Bitcoin? It's Bitcoin, guys. It's this revolutionary <laughs> new money that's going to change the world and make it a better place. Come on. Hell yeah. Um, how did I get into it? That's a long story, um, but I'll keep it somewhat short. I, I bought a little bit of Bitcoin back in the end of 2013, right at the top, and then we crashed and I became a hodler. Um, I would actually gotten it because... Um, you know, I, I was addicted to World of Warcraft briefly. And so I was like, oh, this is like World of Warcraft gold, but you know, real. Um, and I was also studying abroad in Moscow for a little while. And I thought to myself, okay, what if I'm in another country and I don't have money? They won't let me access my bank account. Like I need money that's mine. Um, and so I ended up uh, getting a little Bitcoin. And the, the funny thing is I had gotten it through Coinbase. So even if I was stuck somewhere else and that, you know, it wasn't really sovereign Bitcoin at the time, but I, I learned that later. Um, and then I was sort of um, focused on other things. I was in film school and I became a film producer for a little while. Um, and that's when I sort of got bit by this, by the, then it was the crypto bug. Um, and then later the Bitcoin bug. Um, you know, I, I experienced the excitement of 2017 and the run up and chasing pumps and all this stuff. And I was just like overwhelmed by the, by how exciting it was. And then when, you know, things kind of came crashing down, I, I reevaluated and spent a lot of time sort of trying to understand what was the, you know, the core important thing going on here, you know, ignore the excitement and all the, you know, the, the craziness, what, what's really important. You know, when I came back to Bitcoin and I really did my research there. Um, and at the time I was kind of uh, trying to, I was like, I need to work in this space. I need to do something. And so I, I came on the scene and, you know, I made parody videos and, and was kind of a funny guy for a long time, kind of lampooning the space. And then as I came to really appreciate what Bitcoin is and what Bitcoin is doing and, and going to do, um, you know, I became more serious and I was looking for ways to really contribute. So um, I initially was working for a company called Tantra Labs, which is, that's here in LA. And, you know, just by meeting people in the space, I, I got to know the folks at Swan and, um, it was called Give Bitcoin at the time. It was a slightly different product that's now evolved into, into Swan Bitcoin. Um, and kind of the rest is history. So I'm working as creative director over there. Um, and I'm loving every minute of it. And highly recommend anyone who's interested in working in the Bitcoin space to kind of do their best to do that. Um, and now I get to go on shows like this and talk to you guys. So Totally, totally. And uh, thanks for slumming it today on a crypto channel, Brecky. No, no, I'm just no, kidding. no, no, no. I don't consider you a crypto channel. All right. Oh, wow. I appreciate that. And uh, you know that. Okay. You may call yourselves altcoin daily, but we, we all know that you guys, you know, love yourself some Bitcoin. So well, dude, with like what you said, like once you study it and try and find out what is actually revolutionary, you're going to be like, okay, we need something the most decentralized, the most permissionless, the most censorship resistant with the biggest network that's growing. And it's obviously- you know all these things. Why did you bring me on the show? I'm, I'm <laughs> Dude, when I brought you on the show for that little art piece back there, um, I, I'm guessing just one of those is yours, although maybe you did the Yoda as well? Kind of. The Yoda, I, I actually I found the Yoda online um, and I wanted to print it out gigantic. So when I was still in film school, I took advantage of our poster printing shop and I printed it and I aged it and I did some things, but it wasn't, wasn't my design. But the, the other one was one of my kind of earlier canvases that I held on to. So that's exciting. <laughs> 
Before we get into the art and stuff, you talked about getting in in 2014. Uh, question, did you obviously, well, like, did you manage to take some profits when Bitcoin ran up to 20K or, or did you sell early or, you know, how has your strategy evolved this time because you're an OG now? <laughs> OG, yeah, like maybe compared to some people. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you what I did. I actually, I probably bought around over a thousand dollars each. Um, at the time that was the top, right? And, you know, we crashed and I was, became a hodler, as I said. And then when we got back to, well, no, when we got up to $2,000, I sold one of them. I was like, all right, I'm taking my money off the table. The rest, I'm just playing with gains. So at that point I still had one Bitcoin and- uh, You sold honestly, at what price? I sold, it was the only time I've ever sold Bitcoin and I sold one for $2,000. Uh. <laughs> ah. Okay. Classic, everybody's got that story. But uh, like for this time, so I know like, I think like the strategy where you've talked to a lot of people who understand Bitcoin, and I think everybody kind of thinks the same thing who understands it. There's a portion of my Bitcoin that I'm never going to sell. But then you even talk to some people like Dan Held and he mm -hmm. says, I'm not selling any Bitcoin this cycle. Where do you fall on that? As of now, I'm on the Dan Held side of things. Uh, I don't plan on selling any. Uh, to me, like it is my reserve asset. It's my unit of account. Like I don't, I'm not trying to accumulate dollars, right? I'm trying to accumulate more Bitcoin. Um, and I just don't think t trying to time the market is smart. And here's the other thing that, that scares me is, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, this time is different. But what if this time is actually different, you know? You know, we, we see a landscape that is actually completely different than it was in 2017. We've got, you know, Tesla, you know, just jumping on the bandwagon after MicroStrategy and, you know, 1.5 billion is not chump change. And I don't think Tesla, is, you know, they're not the first and they're not definitely not going to be the last company that we see. So who knows? Like maybe this is that point where Bitcoin reaches escape velocity, you know, and this is a super cycle and it's beyond, um, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think we're going to see it like a 90% drop again. You know, maybe we'll see a few 30% drops here and there, but maybe, maybe, I don't know. Do you want to be that person who sold when, you know, Bitcoin just keeps going up and doesn't come back down to me, it's not worth trying to time it. Um, so I don't know if Bitcoin gets to that point, maybe I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take out a loan from unchained capital or something like that and leverage my Bitcoin a little bit, but I don't ever want to sell. Nice. And when we see like, Elon Musk put 1.5 billion into Bitcoin, huge significance. Mm -hmm. You know, this is that, Matt, this is where we are um, culturally right now with people wanting to find that hedge against Bitcoin. Just how big could you see this cycle being when we're seeing stuff like that in February? I mean, what's the meme? Everything there is divided by 21 million. Like this, the total addressable market of, of Bitcoin is, is everything. So I don't know, we'll see what happens, but my feeling is like even a company like Tesla isn't just hedging, like Elon's not dumb. You know, they're an energy company, right? Effectively, they're not a car company. Uh, and, if, and if Elon supports Bitcoin, you know, as someone who claims to, you know, want to be, uh, you know, support the environment and be green and all these things, you know, he, it leads me to think that he actually does understand Bitcoin, understand that Bitcoin's, he understands that Bitcoin is good for the environment. Um, and I think Tesla has a play. I think Tesla could get, who knows, they could get into mining. They could get into all sorts of things with Bitcoin. So, you know, that's just Tesla, you know, I don't know if you both tuned into Michael Saylor's conference a little bit or heard some of the things that he was talking about, but there's so many different areas where companies can get involved in Bitcoin. Um, so it's all bets are off, I think. By the way, so like months ago when I came on the Swan stream, thanks for having me on. Um, but like we talked about Michael Saylor and it was still pretty early on in the Michael Saylor saga. And I had listened to a bunch of his stuff then, but I didn't, uh, I didn't comprehend how big a deal Michael Saylor would be. I remember thinking at the time, I was like, doesn't this guy, this guy's the you know, active CEO, doesn't he have a company to run? But you know, I just, you know, it's just what he's done and like just being a thought leader, it's, it's crazy to me. What's funny is, is my, my dad, I keep sending my dad stuff for Michael Saylor. And he's like, oh, wow, what if, what if this guy is just going to, you know, dump on everybody? Like he, he's, he's, my dad isn't a Bitcoiner, but he's paranoid enough to be a Bitcoiner, you know? <laughs> um, and I say to him, like, look, you listen to this guy. He's either the best actor in the world 
or he's a Bitcoiner. And I'm telling you, he's not an actor. You know, he he he, I, he sounds genuine. Like I not who knows, but you know, he seems so for the cause, um, or you know, a version of the cause at least. You know, um, that you know, I'm I, I I believe him. So what's really interesting, the really cool part is that it, it was really neat to see someone who who basically got up to speed so quickly, right? You know, how long did it take so many of us to, to get our Bitcoin knowledge? Um, from Michael Saylor, like it's a testament to people, you know, like Altcoin Daily, who, you know, like Robert Breedlove, people who were putting, you know, great content out there about Bitcoin. You know, it's now much easier to get over that hump. And I, and I genuinely think that, you know, with companies like MicroStrategy and Square and now Tesla, you know, and Stone Ridge, like, with all of them do you know taking bitcoin seriously if you're a ceo you have to take bitcoin seriously at this point you know so it's it's going to be a wild couple months that's true i mean whether michael saylor and elon musk are right or not we happen to think they're right um but whether they're right or not just people seeing them doing this stuff it's just going to interest a whole lot of people nobody's going to want to be be last but like speaking of how like much the perception and just the culture is shifting. Let's get right down to it, Brecky. You've been preaching the Bitcoin name forever. Give us the ultimate Bitcoin price prediction for this year and the cycle top, if there's a difference. I forgot you guys do this. You always put people on the spot and ask them about uh, the- Well, you want views or, I mean, come on, let's do it. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Maybe Austin should go first. Austin. My you've been correct. preaching. You've been preaching, Austin. You've been preaching the Bitcoin name forever. You understand Bitcoin way better than anybody. I'm going to get to Brecky next, but give us your ultimate Bitcoin price prediction for this year and this cycle, if there's a difference. Well, I, I mean, let's just go by cycles. To me, that's the easiest. Um, I mean, if Bitcoin went from two thousand to twenty thousand, or was it one thousand to twenty thousand in? Um, 2000, beginning of 2017 to end of 2017. I mean, back then, our audience has heard this before, the, the infrastructure was nothing. Cryptocurrency exchanges were turning down people. Uh, Binance didn't exist. Not that that's the end all be all, but those type of exchanges weren't even there yet. And then now we have corporate entities buying Bitcoin on their balance sheets that they say, we're not selling. You know, we're holding for 10 years to see what happens. So, could we see a higher Bitcoin price than the one, was it 1,000 or 2,000 at the beginning of 2017? It was 1,000 to 20,000. It was about a 300% increase. If Bitcoin, this cycle had a 300% increase from breaking all time highs, 20,000, that would put a Bitcoin price at about $115,000. Seems kind of low, right? I mean, what we're at what, 45, 230 something now? Kind of feels boring, feels normal, feels like <laughs> days where it should be like yesterday. So Bitcoin moves quickly, right? You know, we could be at 100K next week. Um, so this year, so we're at the beginning of the year. Well, do you think the cycle top will be this year? Um, and if so, yeah, give us the prediction. I don't know, man. All right, well, just give us the prediction then, Brecky. This right. year. I think this year, the low end... I'm going to go conservative and say we're definitely we're definitely going to see a hundred thousand dollar Bitcoin. Easy. On the high end, I'm just going to give you a high low and a high. We could see over a million dollar Bitcoin if everyone if every company in the world starts FOMOing in at the same time. Like, come on. Now, granted, that's not financial advice, and you know you should sue these guys, not me, because they brought me on the show. But who knows? <laughs> Well, I, I like it. And the reason that we wanted to ask your opinion on this is because you've been in the space a while and obviously nobody knows the future, but when you are tuned in and you pay attention, you know, ultimately besides self-sovereignty, that's a big reason why a lot of us are here. We want some financial freedom as well through a technology we believe. In. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I would definitely just like reiterate the nobody knows anything thing because even in 2017, like not everyone was taking profits. Not everyone, everyone, you get to that point, And I don't think we're even close to that point yet, but you get to that, that exuberant jubilation point where everyone's just like, yeah, it, it, it can't go down. It's going to keep going. It's gonna keep... And you know what? At some point it is going to come down. Um, so, you know, 
question True. everything, question everyone. Um, uh, plus, I mean, I saw you had both the white swan and the black swan, so something could oh, happen, yeah. and you know, we could see that on crazy dip. But you know, hopefully, it's just white swans. Um, I do want to give a shout out to uh, Brecky's company that I really like, Swan Bitcoin. Links uh, to get ten dollars in bonus Bitcoin is in the description now. I want you to give me the pitch, but this is how I pitch Swan Bitcoin, because I do recommend it. People are texting me all the time, my friends saying, hey, these fees are killing me. What's the best place to buy Bitcoin? And I say, Swan Bitcoin is my preferred spot. It's meant for cost averaging, but you can do one-time buys as well. It's cheaper than Coinbase, it's cheaper than Square, and no withdrawal fee. I mean, in my opinion, it's the withdrawal fee that, that kills you. Is that the correct way? Is that what makes it special? Uh, that's, those are some of the things that make it special. Um, real quick also for your referral links, I think now anybody who signs up and creates an account will get $10 of free Bitcoin. So, uh, that's exciting. We kind of changed that up a bit. Um, but Swan is, you know, Swan's a lot of things, you know, we, we really hone in on education. You know, we don't have a marketing team. We have an education team. Um, so we're always out there, like we're all on Clubhouse now, just like constantly creating rooms and, you know, scheduling talks. And we just, I just came from an amazing lightning talk. So, you know, it's part of it is the culture. You know, I think we, a lot of us have lived through some of the older times in, crypt, in crypto and made mistakes. And we, we want to help people. We want to help people understand Bitcoin as quickly as they can and accumulate Bitcoin um, in a safe and easy way. Um, so that's why Swam was built. And, you know, we also, you know, we've started talking about this more and more because, you know, it's something that we all do, you know, working at Swan and using the dollar cost averaging, the auto auto buy service, I'm effectively paying myself in Bitcoin. Um, and that's something that, you know, I think we're going to try to ramp up the messaging on because it's important. Like, you know, if, if you if you believe that the dollar is devaluing, which I do, and if you kind of look around yourself and look at the grocery store prices and all that, like, you know, the dollar is not a great store of value and Bitcoin is. And so like what I do is I say to myself every week, I'm going to put, you know, I, well, I actually do it every day, but I have a certain percentage of my income and I have it auto buy Bitcoin. So, you know, that's what what I think Swan is for. Yes, it's for smashing buy. And, you know, if you want to FOMO in, you know, have fun doing that, you know, buy as much Bitcoin as you want, obviously. But, you know, to me, the, the, the power of it is one, you know, the fees are really low, lower than anywhere else for auto stacking. And you can affect, you can pay yourself in Bitcoin. You know, you can say to yourself, this is the percentage of my income that I want to store in a, an asset that cannot be debased, that's censorship resistant, that's decentralized, and we make it easy. So join us. Uh, you don't have to get one of these things. Uh, I'd like one. I just yeah. got it for, for screen presence and, uh, cause I'm weird and I like being weird, but that'll, uh, that'll make a great thumbnail. I can already yeah. tell. Did you gift me already? Did you just make it? All right, <laughs> no, let's, dude. Let's... That's awesome. That's the there new gif. <laughs> Everybody, somebody in our audience, uh, you know, make that a gif and tag us in it. I'm speaking of that though like since you're seeing so many new people like onboarding into bitcoin through swan or just your friends that are texting you up now saying hey man bitcoin's still a thing cryptocurrency is still a thing what would you say is maybe one of the biggest misconceptions you hear as new people get into cryptocurrency this cycle um the biggest thing for me is the sort of d the diversification myth that you know having a bag of diversified bag of Bitcoin and plus all these altcoins is, is a safer way to do it. And, you know, if you look back historically, like that's not the case at all, you know, pretty much every alt in, in Bitcoin terms has trend is trending towards zero. And, you know, yeah, if you're a trader and you're a good trader, you might make money trading, you might catch a pump and good for you. That's great. Most people can't do that. I couldn't do that. You know, I couldn't treat it as a full-time job. And I think a lot of people see, you know, traders and they're like, Oh, I can do that too. And, not to say you can't, but you know, a lot of people lose a lot of money that way. And Bitcoin is the greatest risk adjusted return we have here. You know, it's not about, you know, if you can catch an 8,000 X pump, because most people can't. It's about what are you doing? Are you, are you working to make your make to provide a better future for yourself and for your loved ones? You know, are you thinking long term? And I would urge people to do that. You know, don't chase the short term gains. You know, Bitcoin is not as, you know, as Jameson Lop says, it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's a don't get poor slowly scheme. Um, so, yeah. 
And I think this is the first cycle where people are realizing that Bitcoin is here to stay in a big way. So hopefully people understand the value of cost averaging Bitcoin more and more and why they should just be holding uh, at least a little bit. 100%, man. I mean, one other thing I would just say is one, probably the one thing I wish I had done when I first got in the space was to really do a deep dive on Bitcoin first. You know, you want to go out there and, you know, maybe you like Ethereum, you like all these altcoins, that's fine. But do me a favor, like spend, spend the time on Bitcoin first and then, then decide if you, if, the, if you need more than Bitcoin. Dude, I totally agree with you. Um, I, I t tell that to my friends. I mention that in videos sometimes. If you're like, like for me personally, I follow this space every day. Uh, I'm like follow space every day. Is that what I, I follow? I follow the cryptocurrency space every day. For, I mean, for me personally, full disclosure, I'm about at the moment, 85% Bitcoin, the rest altcoins. But for new people coming into the space, I would just recommend them learn why Bitcoin is valuable and start, uh, you know, cost averaging with that uh, because it's the most asymmetrical upside with the least risk. But um, could you name some of some other influences that, that you know, you can maybe send people who want to learn more about Bitcoin? Sure. I mean, at Swan, we're actually giving away Jan Pritzker's book. Um, so highly recommend that. It's, it's just swanbitcoin.com slash free book. Um, it's probably, it's what I send to everyone first. It's probably a two or three hour read. We're, we're giving away the audio book or the ebook. So grab that. Um, you know, people like Robert Breedlove, if you want to get down the more philosophical side of Bitcoin and why it's so revolutionary, his latest, uh, his uh, he has a new YouTube and his, his Sailor series where he, he kind of, it's a very long form, almost interview with, with uh, Michael Saylor. Highly recommend it. It's, it's incredible. And, you know, books like the Bitcoin standard are, are you know, part of the, the, the canon that can't be missed there. There's so many resources out there. And, but as far as like people goes, like uh, different personalities that you think people should follow. Oh, obviously, uh, um, uh, Aaron and Austin, like for sure. <laughs> come on, come on. Um, no, come on. You're TFTC, uh, you know, Saifedean, Tone Base, right? <laughs> tone Base? I like Tone. I don't know if I, he, he does know his Bitcoin stuff. Well, yeah. I, I actually like him more as a fundamental analyst. Like yes. that's the value I got from him. I, um, I, uh, I don't know. Guys like Jimmy Song are fantastic. Um, Guys, I mean, I love following NVK on Twitter. Um, you can learn some some great stuff about Bitcoin security and things like that. Um, Guy Swan, like he's he's it's amazing what you learn when you read. He, he he's known as the guy who's read more than anything, more than more about Bitcoin than anyone. And he's got a great podcast where you can you know listen to him read all the articles about Bitcoin. And so he's a he's a fantastic voice in the space too. And um, yeah, appreciate it. All right, let's uh, let's let's change topics a little bit here. Do you want to get to new, or you want to get to art, Austin, or you want to get to what? I would love to get to art, and we'll just start more big picture. But what impact would you say that artists or Bitcoin art have had on adoption thus far? That's an interesting one. I mean, the thing is, Bitcoin has has. The narratives have changed and Bitcoin art has changed over the years. Like the early days, there was, the, you know, like Rare Pepe's on Counterparty, which was a totally really rad, interesting, weird movement kind of thing going on. Right. Um, but these days, I'm really excited by what I'm seeing. Like, look at what like Crypto Graffiti and Nano, not Nano Bricks, um, uh, Josie Bellini did with their Billboard series. I don't know if you guys saw that, but, you know, they put... Um, I think it's called BTC versus the Fed. There's a Twitter handle and they put 12 um, billboards in all the cities where there are federal reserve banks and they put them in low income neighborhoods. And it's, it's incredible. It's like this giant version of the, the US dollar that has um, kind of like a Satoshi version of George Washington. And, you know, there's an, if you hold your phone up at it with a certain app, there's this AR animation of the dollar burning. It's, it's incredible. And I, I think things like that are the most exciting to me, like public works of art. Um, so I, we haven't, I don't, I don't think there's been enough. It, like, and this is not criticizing the existing artists, but this is a call to action for anyone out there who is an artist, you know, to get out there and, you know, go legally graffiti a wall with the Bitcoin symbol. Like go just get out there and do what you got to do and spread the word and, you know, put stickers up. Like it doesn't really matter. You know, things like that to me are, are what are really important. And 
Uh, I would just love to see a lot more of it. And I think we will. I still have like a bunch of those stickers that you gave me um, <laughs> that like you just give Bitcoin to the next generation. You just handed me way too many at Bitcoin is that one year and I still have a bunch, but I've been putting, I've been graffitiing it up sometimes, but I only go so many places. Um, well, following up on that, when you make your art, what is your objective? To make money, to influence a neighbor, what? It's kind of in the beginning and, and kind of still now it's more, it's a hobby. It's fun. It's like, I enjoy it. Um, sometimes it's things to kind of spread the word. Like, you know, I'd make a bunch of cheap prints and when I'm at a, back when we used to have conferences, you know, I would just give away posters to people who are new to Bitcoin, things like that. Um, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't to make money. Everyone's a scammer and uh, I'd love to sell some art and uh, get some Bitcoin for it. Um, but, you know, to me, it's also about, you know, starting conversations. So ideally, anytime I sell a piece of art, I'd like it to be, to go somewhere where, you know, there's foot traffic, uh, a little hard these days, but you know, I don't love the idea of art just going into a private collection somewhere. Like I'd rather it go to a, you know, a Bitcoin center or, you know, a public office or something like that, where it might spark conversations. Um, but even so, like, even if you sell your, let's say you sell your art to, uh, you know, someone like a Michael Saylor or a, you know, someone who's, who's wealthy and like, they're going to take your art and put it in their office. Well, you know what? They're going to have other people who come into that office and they might say, Hey, what's that? And you know, it starts a conversation. So to me, that's, you know, the highest form of, of what I call Bitcoin art is, is it's art that is meant to provoke conversations around Bitcoin and get people thinking. Um, so if I can, if I can do that just once then then, uh, then I'm, I've succeeded. And um, perhaps maybe like some of the greatest art throughout history or even some artists, the Bitcoin art being created today won't be appreciated until years down the line. Maybe, I don't know. I like to ah. think that with social media, it'll be appreciated uh, a, lot, a lot quicker. But uh, no, dude, 10 years and it's really going to be appreciated. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I did want to ask you, though. Obviously, like I know your thoughts, I think, as a Bitcoiner on NFTs, mm -hmm. but as an artist on NFTs and even just seeing notable artists, uh, Mark Cuban, Austin was there, others the who are kind of the Winklevi supporting it. Um, is your opinion as an artist any different than as a Bitcoiner or, or how do you think about NFTs? It's a complicated subject, but I'm not, I, I'm in, in general, I'm in favor of NFTs. Um, it really depends on, on how you view them. Um, to me, like I'm, I'm here for the sound money first and foremost, like my, any art that I make is in service to Bitcoin. That's how I view it. It's not just, you know, art that uses the technology. Like there are some people who are quote unquote crypto artists who are just using blockchains and NFTs, you know, to help them sell their artwork and, and make a living, which I think is great also. Um, but when it comes to Bitcoin and NFTs, it's difficult. Like I have a lot of friends who are artists who are Bitcoin maximalists, but they're tokenizing their art on Ethereum because, you know, it, it's not possible to really do it on Bitcoin in a way that is super easy to do yet. Um, and, you know, I, I've spoken to, to many of them and they're just like, yeah, as soon as it, we can do it on Bitcoin, I'm going to come back to Bitcoin. Like they're not tied to it. And I think you're seeing problems also, you know, on Ethereum with fees. You know, it, to, if you're a, a budding artist and you want to try this stuff out, like it's hard to, you know, you, it could cost you an arm and a leg to just, tokenize something for practice, you know, to figure out how it works. Um, so I'm really excited about what's happening on the Lightning Network with the, uh, the RGB protocol as well. I'm hoping by the end of the year, we'll have a, uh, you know, a really great UI for this. Um, and sites like um, uh, Scarcity. So I'm, I'm, I'm advising this company called Scarcity and they uh, recently launched a Lightning uh, auction site. Um, for now, it's just physical goods. Um, and recently they just did a, um, they've had a couple of really successful auctions where you place your bids using the lightning network. Um, and the last one was this incredible handmade, like, uh, basically version of like, I think it was a block explorer for Bitcoin and it was absolutely stunning and it sold for like over 80 grand or 70 grand, something like that worth of Bitcoin. So really cool stuff. But once, um, NFTs are more doable on Bitcoin, they're going to be integrating that as well. So that's really exciting. But, you know, you guys kind of alluded to this a little while ago, like there is this rift in the Bitcoin community where some people think NFTs are just stupid, right? They're like, they're dumb. They shouldn't be on Bitcoin, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
I'm kind of with them that it, they shouldn't be on the main chain. Like that's just a waste of block space and it'd be too expensive after a while anyway, probably is now. Um, but that's what second, that's I, what I think second layer is for, you know, to experiment and do these kinds of things. You know, with lightning, the fees will be next to nothing. Um, but it, I do think it's important to note that you can't get rid of the, the trust between artist and collector, let's say. You know, if I'm uh, tokenizing something, you have to trust that artist who did it, that they're not going to, you know, go and make some other copies that, you know, they don't tell you, tell you about, or, you know, make a second edition, things like that. So, you know, NFTs, they don't solve the Oracle problem. They don't, I don't want to call them a gimmick because they're not really a gimmick, but they're an improvement on what exists, like a paper certificate of authenticity, for example, you know, a digital version that can be tracked and can be, you know, traded and, and you can, you can buy and sell with much, more ease is definitely an improvement on that, but it's not like it's solving every problem the world has ever seen. So I think they're really cool, but I think it's important to kind of understand them for what they are and, you know, not expect too much of them. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It's a budding space and it's interesting to see, you know, I, I think they're here to stay in terms of how they evolve and, you know, on what platform they evolve. That's the big question. It may take years to find out. We haven't even, yeah, that's the other thing. I don't think we've seen the beginning of what NFTs are capable of, how people will use them. You know, there's, a, there's already some really cool stuff like artists who, are, who, are allowed, who automatically get royalties when the NFTs are resold. Like that's, that's amazing for the artist, but wow. uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It'll be exciting. Cool, cool, cool. Um, any other questions on art, Austin? Um, are you working on anything now? I'm getting a piece finalize that for, for auction actually on this site, Scarcity. So I'll be auctioning off next week. How much? Um, <laughs> Whoa, the hard questions. The hard question, we'll see, we'll see. Well, I think what is it, what is the piece? Let's hype it up so our audience will be bidding on it. It's a, uh, it's a, I could go get it. Um, yeah. It's, it's a giant resin block uh, with a Satoshi mask embedded in there. And can you go get it? Dude, we'd love to see it. All right, hold, hold on one second. <laughs> we'll entertain the troops while you're away. So, uh, Brecky Von Bitcoin. Good dude. his art. Good dude. Good dude. Hey, guys, make sure you uh, like the video if you appreciate us bringing on different guests like this. And make sure you check out Swan Bitcoin. It legitimately is the cheapest, easiest way to cost average Bitcoin into one-time one buys, right? Yep, I use it. Nice. Oh my God, it's freaking heavy. Whoa. Odd. Whoa, dude. Cool. So it's sort of this giant resin concrete thing with an open dime embedded in it. Oh my God, this is heavy. Whoa. So how do, awesome. you how do you make that? A lot of trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> um, you use molds. So like I would build my own molds. Um, you cast the resin in multiple layers. I think that was cast in around seven or eight different layers. And then I, you embed, I embedded the piece in a custom concrete base. Um, I embedded the open dime in there as well. The joke with the open dime is that, you know, if nobody wants the artwork, I could always send some Bitcoin to it and it has some value. Ah, uh, nice. Um, and, yeah. and the open dime is you're able to like access the open dime and use it? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. So you could, whoever buys it could, you know, send Bitcoin to it and use this as like a cold storage device of, of sorts. What is the starting bid or asking price going to be? I don't know that there is a starting bid. I have to ask them. Um, if there is, I'll probably, I don't know, set a reserve around 500 or $1,000. I got to look up what the materials cost was. but uh, I want somebody from our audience to get that. So um, when are you putting that up for auction? I would love that. Uh, I think the auction is going to be a week from tomorrow, so next Thursday. And how come, dude, why not clay? Like why resin? Maybe that's a dumb question, but like okay. why? By the way, it'll probably be this Thursday for people tuning into this stream. This Thursday, tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I mean, resin to me, it's just a really cool, uh, well, so it, it's see-through. So I don't know if maybe, one second. I mean, I saw the face, obviously. Because that's like seven inches worth of resin. If it was clay, you wouldn't, it would just be solid. Wow. But the base, I probably, Oh. oh my god. And that's um 
I shouldn't use concrete to be honest. I, uh, I love using concrete because there's this like metaphor to it that concrete actually gets stronger with time and Bitcoin also gets stronger with time. Um, and so that's why I really vibe with it. But now this thing is probably like 30 pounds and it's going to be fortune to ship it, but it's all right. Cool. Cool. As we're, you know, wrapping up with, you know, final five minutes or final questions, I had a question, which a lot of people in our audience ask us. So I want to get your opinion. Obviously the name of the game is to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can. How many Satoshis minimum does the average person need in 2021 to gain financial freedom? What does financial freedom mean though? You know, is that you never have to work again? Is that, which, who wants to do that? You know, I don't want to Well, like, uh, well, the reason I'm asking is because a lot of people come in and go, oh, I don't want to buy just a few Satoshis. I want to like, is the unit bias. So like, I guess is 0.25 Bitcoin enough? Is uh, 10,000 Satoshis enough? Or You know what I'll say? I don't know that there is a number because it depends on the person and the lifestyle and all that stuff. What I will say is important. It's not how much you, Bitcoin you have. It's the fact that you're continuously stacking Bitcoin. You know, if you're earning dollars and you're not converting at least a percentage of that to Bitcoin, you know, that's when I think you're going to be in trouble down the line because then you might have to play catch up and try to get more Bitcoin down the road. You know, buy a little bit of Bitcoin every day or once a week or once a month, whatever it is, you know, I think that's what will really bring financial freedom, not, you know, 6.15 Bitcoin or whatever the meme is, you know. Right. Did you have the, uh, the guts back last year when Bitcoin was above $10,000, but less than $14,000 to do an extraordinary purchase of Bitcoin, or were you waiting for it to drop lower? I'm glad you said at that time, because I didn't have the guts at 3,000 because I thought it was going lower. Freaking Murad. Damn you, Tone Vase. Murad Mamadov, wherever you are, you and your fund that blew up, okay? I listened to you and your stupid advice. Although I'll say to everyone, you can't actually blame anyone. You know, it was my fault. I should have known better. I should have known, oh, $3,000 Bitcoin. I should have looked at my conviction, said, conviction, we go to a million? Yes, we are. And, you know, I didn't. So I, I, I did uh, convert probably more, a more substantial amount of my liquid assets around the time you were talking about, but I should have done it earlier. Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. And Murad doesn't give interviews anymore, or at least not really. So that's uh, an, another loss to the space. Yeah, I don't know what happened. He, he kind of disappeared after the fund blew up. So, mm. Yeah, I hope he comes back. He had great perspective. He did. Um, my final question, I suspect over these next six to 12 months, we will see an influx of new people entering cryptocurrency just because when price... You know, it would be great to buy at all-time lows, but as the price gets higher, that's what really excites people. Crypto gets on the news and stuff. If you could give one message to new cryptocurrency investors coming into this space, what would you tell them? Watch Altcoin Daily. Dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, watch Altcoin Daily and do your own research. There you go. Hell yeah. <laughs> Is that really what you tell your friends though? I want to know what you tell your friends coming into the space. Uh, I say, don't be, can I curse on this show or no? Yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. Buy some Bitcoin. What's wrong with you? Stop asking me about Chainlink. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. That's what I say. All right. Cool, uh, cool. Uh, so like what's next for you? Uh, what's next for Swan? Uh, what's next for Swan? I mean, we're just growing like crazy. Um, we brought Robert Breedlove on to handle uh, Swan private right now. So if you're watching and you're a high net worth individual or, you know, a corporation, uh, we got Robert to hold your hand through the process of uh, buying as much Bitcoin as you like and then adopting a corporate treasury. Um, we're just, we're just continuing to grow. We're, we're expanding, um, you know, the shows that we're offering and, you know, the education we're putting out and we're just, uh, you know, we're here to help people become Bitcoiners and excited to do it. Was Swan at the uh, Michael Saylor conference for corporations? We were watching. We, we didn't quite get everything together in time to present, although I'm sure he would have had, uh, we had like just brought Robert on right then. Uh, so hopefully next time. But, uh, I was going to ask if maybe you could give us like who are the big names there, but I guess we'll have to wait. Well, I mean, it was confirmed that Tesla was there. Oh, really? Uh, it was confirmed that Disney was there. Um, 
but uh, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Max Kaiser saying Oracle's next. Um, Damn. All right. Hey, uh, thank you for, for coming on today, Brecky. Uh, we're big fans of you. I'm sure we'll hang out again. Uh, big fans of Swan. Uh, thanks, man. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you.